Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, it is uh, absolutely my pleasure to uh, chair this first session of the Anson, 12th Anson workshop. Uh, this session is about a bridge structure health monitoring, and uh, we have four presentations in this uh, session. And I quickly introduce myself first, which I introduce uh, the speaker. My name is Jian Chun Li. I'm Professor of Structured Dynamics from the University of Technology, Sydney. I'm also the deputy president of the Anson. So um, because we're running sort of behind the schedule, so I better just go straight to our first presentation. So in fact, our first and second presentation will be delivered by the same group, uh, which is uh, from the QUT, and uh, they have part one, part two. And the first presentation is a structure health monitoring of the building and the bridge and research at uh, QUT. Uh, I think uh, I would like to invite, I don't know, uh, Tommy, are you the speaker for the? Yes. Uh, for, okay. So Professor Tommy Chen, and probably everyone already know him to start his uh, presentation. Here, here we go, Tommy. Okay, so thank you so much. So uh, Ross, can you turn on my screen? You can should be able to turn it on uh, so, there. So. Uh, and also turn on my video so that is it I turn it. Okay. Okay, is it, it now everyone can see me? Hey, Tommy, you have to, it isn't turned on yet. You have to turn it on. Okay, I turn on my video, is it? Okay, it seems that I can not turn on. No, I talk, yeah, Tommy, your video is not on. Yes, so uh, it seems that uh, uh, Ross, please turn on my video. I'm sorry, I cannot turn the video on. Is it? But is that that only the host can do that? Is it? No, you should be able to turn it on. But what I have is I saying that only I, uh, okay, I tried to do it again. So it says that. When I start video, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Ah, I've turned it on. I might have to go without it at the moment when I sort it out. You'll have to continue, Tommy, until I sort it out. Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, so basically, uh, I, um, what we would like to uh, present today is about our QT research for the last 10 years. Uh, and we you just try your video now, Tommy. Sorry. Okay, now it's. Yeah, you're on, Tommy. Okay, so. good. Okay, so. Yes, so we would like to. Um, present to you our research work for the past 10 years on SHM. So the title of our work is SHM of Buildings and Bridges Research at QUT. So it consists of two parts. Part one presented by me, uh, which will be just for the introduction. And for part two, uh, it will be by my research fellow, uh, Dr. Roland Newen. So, because I don't want to myself to be exposed that much for the workshop, so I just introduced that for the first uh, five minutes, and then later I leave it for Roland to present it. So, Ross, after it stopped, then Roland will continue, and Roland will share his screen Conti uh, after I stopped my presentation. Okay, so what you can see now here, is the, um, the research team here. So for the past 10 years, so we have um, been doing a lot of research and which includes uh, investigators and supervisor with uh, myself and David. David has been 
um, working closely with me and most of the project, uh, I co work with uh, Professor David Van Beretnam and the other, like uh, uh, Sabina, Tafia, uh, uh, Roland, they are the uh, investigators and supervisor of all these um, research. And also, one person I would also like to acknowledge Andy Newen. So, Andy, he has been working in with me, I think, um, um, uh, since in uh, seven years or, or eight years. I can't remember exact number of the years, but he has contributed much to our research team, but now he moved to the USQ. And these are the research staff and students that we are uh, working for that. So all the projects that we present are not only the work of the investigator and the supervisor, they include a team effort of all these people they're working on that. So when we are talking about uh, uh, research on ethic chain, we should, I should uh, mention that um, not only focus at a particular area. To me, I'm thinking that a complete or a thorough research in SHM, which include three different categories. The first one is on system development, which means that how we deploy the sensors and how we can and make the system to be to collect the data effectively. That's the main issue for the system development, because a lot of the time people consider that SHM is just to place sensor here, there, and everywhere. To me, SHM is not only to place the sensor. A lot of the time, if we place the sensors uh, randomly, then after some years, we will have problem of having too much data. And also some of the sensors, actually, if we don't place them effectively, effectively at a correct point, what they collect may not be useful. And at the end, these sensors will just become redundant. So system development is very important for SHM. And also because of uh, nowadays for the SHM system, um, we try to see how we can transmit the data and also how we can control uh, to provide supply, power supply to that. All these relate to the SHM system. So we need to have a good system um, uh, to put research to work on it. So we, in the past, we have quite a number of projects on this area. And then the second category is on sensors and measurement. For the sensors, a lot of the time uh, uh, for the uh, sensor developer, they may not develop the sensors tailor-made for civil engineering application. Say for example, sometimes um, our asinometers developed may not be sensitive enough to capture what we will need. And also sometimes we may need to have some sensors to measure the vertical displacement of a structure. So, then we need to have some way to measure it. And also like the, some of the value, like uh, how to measure the P-stress force in um, P-stress concrete is also an important uh, um, parameter that the um, engineer would like to work on. So how this could be measured is another issues that we are interested. And the third category is applications. So once we have all the data, how we can analyze them, store them, and how we can make use of them to, for safety operation and also for the safety of the structure, as well as for the future design. All these related to the application of the SHM. So in the past, we have for the system development, we have some large scale tests, and also we have developed some real world test beds like this uh, living laboratory, the P block that we are having, that we place the sensors there, and so that we are able to use it and test whether the, data, the information we collect are good enough for the development of SHM applications. So these are two examples of the project 
that in the under the category of the system development. And then we have sensors and measurement, like we have the FBG based displacement sensors, how we can you make use of the unique features or the benefits of FBG sensors, which one of the benefits of that is we can use it as a sensor as well as a transmit media. So because of that, we can have a number of sensors within a nine of F FBG e e e fiber. So you know, this is very good for us to use it to develop a displacement sensors. And also we have a FBG based asinometers developed. And also for the application, we have something like how we can make use of the sensor to detect damage and also de to detect the uh, deterioration. So regarding the levels of the damage and deterioration, we, we can try to see whether we can detect it, the existence and whether we can locate it and whether we can assess it for the uh, extent of the damage and whether we can find it out um, the remaining life of it. And also we can make use of that for the system identification or the structural identification. And we can make use of that to estimate the load carrying capacity and identify pre-stress force and identify moving force. And also we can make use of those data collected for structural impact mitigation. So I leave it for the, to the rest for Dr. Roland. So the next speaker, Dr. Roland. So I stop my sharing of the screen so you can continue to start to, uh, to share your screen and continue the presentation. So I would like to introduce to you my research fellow, Dr. Roland Lewin. 